Hi, welcome to Joy Fido International. Um, today we're going to be talking about something really, really, really exciting, um, fundamental, important. Uh, you know what Joy Fido International stands for? It's all about supporting you and helping you to success, helping you achieve success in your life. And that's what Joy Fido International is all about. So, as always, um, I find topics and issues that I know are affecting people out there. And I look at ways on how I have been able to cope with these issues. And then I come and chat with you about it. Now, with time that we've been bringing this on, so many people have written to thank me and you know, telling me, please don't stop because some days some things really hit them on the nerve. It touches places that people would normally not know they, they have. So this has encouraged me to keep looking at things that I have coped with. And one of my biggest things is sharing. And that's why I always come on screen to share what I'm experiencing or what I've seen or what I've had people go through and I come and share them with you. So welcome on board and my name is Joy Fido. Okay, so like I said, it's it's quite an important topic. And what is the topic about? It's about what I would like to call the M word or maybe the R word. And what is M word? M word is about marriage. Our word relationship. So the title is about um, being aware of that marriage trap. I call it marriage trap. So we're going to just look at what marriage does to us or relationships does to us, how it supports our life and how it will actually destroy our life. So marriage is a major, major part of us in our communities or relationships or partnership as some people love to do um, so cohabitating partnership marriage all of them are coming under the same umbrella and how does it affect us how does it help our life and so it's all about us being fully aware of what we're doing in this union relationship marriage partnership it's a union so how is it affecting us how is it supporting us how is it helping us to achieve success in life so marriage is um whatever it is that it is for you so you could be looking at a relationship you could be looking at a partnership or you could be looking at a marriage whatever it is that is what you are in i want you to take that on board in this discussion we're going to be having um for me it's about marriage so i'm going to be picking the word marriage most of the time but occasionally i'll say partnership and and relationship um maybe relationship should be a better one because most people are in relationship and not everybody is in marriage so relationship let's let's maybe use that word so now in society or our, our communities um we're told that when we get into that union marriage relationship um is usually one plus one equals one and that's how that math is done in the sense of you and somebody else will make one so how is it working for you one plus one equals one is that what it is for you now the reason i'm asking is lots of us go into relationship with so much at the back of our minds and ideally society is telling us that it should be one plus one equals one but does everybody come into a relationship with that mindset of one plus one equals one equals one in the sense of you are not thinking the same you're now walking to the same him sheet as some people will say or you're now reading from the same page of what your big picture is so is this the case with you 
what is, what is your case? Um, what are you experiencing in your relationship? Are you one plus one equals one, or is it one plus one equals two? Because in a marriage or in a relationship, that's what society expects from us. One plus one equals one. So if you find that's not what is happening, how is that helping your life? Now, my idea of an exciting marriage or relationship is one that brings out the best of the other party or the other partner. So, um, in a scenario of one plus one equals one, uh, we tend to say the other half. So when we are in a relationship, we say to ourselves, my other half. And that's what it is, because when these two halves come together, you create the one, hence one plus one equals one. So your other half, what is your other half made of? Um, is it a better half of you? Because then you hear, oh, you know my better half? And something that came to my mind the other day was, is this person a bad half of you? So these are some of the things we're going to be looking at. I know when it comes to marriage, it is so personal and so complicated and so um, tedious that it's a topic that everyone avoids. No one wants to talk about marriage. But marriage is something that affects all of us or relationship is something that affects all of us um lots of us look into the bible for instance if you are a christian and where the bible where god says go ye and multiply so you go out there in the world to multiply and if we are to keep this um human life or human existence going we have to come together to create that multiplication so there's always that one person and the other person who come together to create this whole or this one that becomes a union that leads to multiplication sometimes. I'm not saying that all relationships must end up with children or, or, or marriages end up like that. But working from the biblical point of view, one plus one um, will go out there and multiply and then it also enhances why uh, most times we end up in marriages but our relationships so we are in this union to create a beautiful whole but is this what always happens because when when i said is a very complicated topic and very personal topic um what works for you may not work for the other person and this is why not everybody is willing to come out there and say what's going on in their marriages um but I am taking it on because I know there's quite a lot going on out there. Um, lots of people out there are experiencing a lot of things that somehow needs to be brought out. Um, I'm going to call on my experience of 23 years in marriage and I know so many people around me, um, lots of friends, lots of families, um, lots of things I read about, lots of stories you hear or maybe you watch it program and then you look at all the celebrities and all these marital issues going on and it forms the foundation of how we grow up as human beings as well you're gonna hear when um, someone's come from a very a broken home and then they end up with a broken home as well and so how does that affect us how does this thing that's supposed to be an amazing union and good thing turn out to be such a bad thing now what I'm not saying is every marriage ends up bad or every relationship ends so bad. But we're going to just look at some of the things that could be going on that maybe you need to hear from someone so you can help yourself sort out some of the things you are dealing with. And maybe you need to be aware of them even if you're not dealing with them because then you could see someone who's dealing with similar thing and then you could think, oh, this is what I had. Maybe you need to look at it as well. And what I always encourage is, you know, if you hear something that's useful to other people, happily share the video with them so that it could help them in whatever they are going through as well.
So like I said, relationship is a major part of our life. Um, obviously, biblical point of view, um, communal point of view, societal point of view. Once you're of a certain age, it's expected you hook up with someone, you go out there, you create your own family, you create your own relationship and you carry on with your own life. Um, but after the infatuation is done, because in most cases, 16, 18, um, 20, you know, young us, we get excited, we hook up with each other, and then we form this union. So after that infatuation is done, when we cannot wait to see each other, and when everything is so exciting, and then, um, and then in some cases, the huge wedding, the big wedding, you know, spending all the money and receiving all the amazing gifts and opening them up and then obviously going for the honeymoon in some cases um having so much amazing parties and dressing to your teeth and all of that when all of that is done and then you go home and now it's just you and your partner hence the partner what then happens now there are some exciting statistics to this which i will bring to you um but just to get us started, I was looking on the internet today and um, in the US alone, this is the US, between 40 to 50% of all first marriages and 60% of second marriages end in divorce. And they gave some, um, some factors that's causing it. Marrying um, at a young age, less education or income, which is a major part of things that go on living together before marriage, uh, premarital pregnancy in some cases, no religious affiliations, coming from a divorce background like I mentioned, um, lack of commitment by maybe one party or both parties. These are some of the factors they are tying to it. Um, other problems are too much arguing in the home, infidelity on any part of the, of the union, um, marrying at a very young age and unrealistic expectations so again these are some of the things that could be causing the problem um uh, one of the ones i know with most of us is this unrealistic expectation but here in the uk for the 42 percent of marriages um end up in divorce and 34 percent of the marriages are expected to end in divorce by the 20th wedding anniversary so it's a major in major issue in our society and for me, looking at the better half and the bad half syndrome, um, I want to know what happens with the bad half situation. How is it affecting you? How is it helping you to become that person that, you know, as a child, you had some dreams of who you were going to be when you grow up. I enjoy asking kids that question. So what are you going to be when you grow up? Because I know I had dreams as a child. And then you had this big dream in your head and you end up with a half. Where this one plus one is becoming one. You end up with this half. Now, is this half a better half of you? Or is this half a bad half of you? So when you two, you two come together, how much of each other do you know? How much of the other person do you know? And how much of you does that person know? And sometimes I say to ourselves as well, how much of you do you know? For instance, how, how much of me do I know? I was chatting um, with someone the other day and she said she was married to this person for 12 years only to discover that he was bisexual. I mean, imagine a blow like that. 12 years before you find out that this is this person. And this is what goes on. We were having a chat the other day and my daughter was really curious and she said, but how could you not know who a person is when you get involved with this person? And we were all trying to explain to her because she's quite young, that some people have an amazing habit of hiding who they are for as long as possible and when this lady told me the story of this 12 year old marriage it just added up for me most of the time we don't even know who we are 
we don't know who we are attaching ourselves to and then we get into marriage and then we discover the bad health so do you know your partner well and does your partner know you well and when you do this is so so important because this knowledge will then help you know if you've got your better half or if you've got your bad half and like I said the reason I decided to do this video is because there's so much going on out there that what I said was my idea of a good relationship is one that helps to bring out the best out of you um, lots of people say you're cheerleader the, the kind of person that sits out there and encourages you to know yourself better to grow and supports your your dreams and your hopes and your ideas and and most of the time you're both reading from the same page so you have a bigger image of what you expect from this union um, and I keep calling it union because it's like a partnership when you're trying to grow a business as well so you have a business and you have a big image of the business so there'll be short-term goals and medium-term goals and then long-term goals so in this union which two people have come together to create a bigger whole you both agree that these are the things we should be expecting from each other these are the things we want to do this is how we want our life to go this is how we want our union to go and so you have all these amazing things and so this other half of you is there supporting and being part of and agreeing and you're growing together and making this whole thing come to pass but then when you now discover this other half of you is a bad half of you now bad half of you is the kind of person who really um i tend to call it a flat tire syndrome um flat tire when you see a car that's got a flat tire it's unable to move that car just sits in the middle of the road is not going forward and is not getting out of the way so that's what a bad half of you looks like um, this person is not supporting your growth this person has no dreams with you this person has all of this but this person is not getting out of your life so you can move your life forward this person pra practically just sits there and instead of supporting you with growth and helping to move both of you forward is actually helping to drain you to pull you down to cause you so much heartache and give you so much pain and what I say the bad half of you actually does is to help destroy you you remember we just talked about you as a child having these amazing dreams of what you want to be and suddenly all of that disappears so we're gonna try and understand what the role of this bad half of you is causing in your life and how you can come out of this scenario because it's something that I've heard so much about it's some something that's happening so much around me it's something that 23 years of marriage I know about so we need to look at how we can address this issue and see what we can do to help ourselves get back on track because remember the whole idea of our videos especially on this uh, personal growth and personal development and helping you grow is about supporting you to to clean your state of mind because it's your state of mind that helps you become who you are and um, the other day where I, I i keep thinking about this thing about what they call the secret you remember when that secret came out and they wrote all these books and everyone was getting so excited about the secret and it was all about the law of attraction and how um, you attract what you put out there and my big question now is um, what, state of, what state of mind do you find yourself in when you end up attracting what that thing is because it's your thoughts that creates your actions and it's your actions that creates whatever then becomes of you and all of the rest becomes history and becomes what you are attracting into your life so what state of mind 
helps you to create the thoughts that you're getting. And I watch most of these videos on how to get, get wealthy quickly and how to create this and how to create that. And what I find these people are not talking about is happiness. Because for me, personally, the greatest thing you can ever ask for in life is to be happy. And I have tested it and I have experienced it in action. When you have a clean, clear state of mind, which is a happy state of mind, everything happens. What you're dreaming of, you're able to wake up and do it, you're not dragged down, you're not pulled back. You're... And if we find ourselves in a relationship that is robbing us of that happiness, then what do you end up attracting? And do you see how this whole thing is connecting itself? So for me, it's about helping you achieve success. And you cannot achieve success if you're not in a, in a position to create that healthy state of mind that will help you do those things you want to do. And relationship is one of the biggest, biggest killers of happiness where if you end up with a bad half of yourself, the, the, the part of you that is not there to encourage you to grow. So, um, question is, which is what I've said before, is are you both reading from the same page? Now, every partner in a relationship brings something on board, um, so that could be good or bad. And we talked about the bad, bad, um, the bad half. So these are some of the things you need to be aware of because it's about being aware of where you are in your relationships. So we're trying to understand who this partner is and equally understand ourselves. So question now, uh, do you both like similar things? You and your partner. Um, do you both like going to similar places? I mean, even things like reading similar books or watching similar programs on TV or playing similar games or um, activities, all these things count. All these things count. Now, sometimes people say opposites attract and, um, and, and the other way around repel. So when you're not opposites and you're similar, you, pay, you repel each other. And when you're opposites, you attract each other. Personally, with marriage, I don't think so. I don't think opposites attract. It may be in that early heated stage of infatuation and excitement and all of that. Oh yeah, she, she loves dressing up and I just don't dress up at all. Or she loves going to parties and I just don't like going to parties at all. Um, she loves being seen and I would rather shy away and not let anyone see me. Now, what happens is, as you grow older in marriage, you saw the statistics saying, um, by, the, by, by the 20th anniversary, 60% would have divorced. You, you gradually start understanding that this person does not like what you like. And we, I mentioned about celebrities as well. A good example was the, was the case of Madonna and Guy Ritchie. And I sit in the background and most times I just watch what's going on around me. And when I had that relationship going on, I thought, mm, I don't know how long this is going to last. Why? Because they were completely opposite people. She was out there, you know, seen by the world, um, you know, would get on and would get up and do whatever she felt like at whatever time. She never gave two thoughts about anything and she does it. And this was a guy who was just quietly happy in his, you know, countryside life and, you know, doing his own thing without any attention. And you bring these two opposite people together and you're expecting them to get on. And when it was the divorce time, I just thought, well, it did not surprise me in any form because suddenly one party is being forced to be unhappy for the other party. Unhappy in the sense of, I'm naturally like this, I'm naturally wild and I'm naturally seen by everyone and I'm naturally in your face. 
and suddenly I have to comport to expectation. I have to dress in a certain way, which is something I'm not used to, and I have to look a certain way, you know, in order to fit into your crowd. And the same is expected in the other way around. So it just did not work. And I know that most of the time when we're told these opposites attract, I don't think it's with marriage or humans as we are, because you, te you tend to eventually end up going out with the same kind of people that you know. You want to hang around with people that appreciate who you are. Because for someone like me, um, I, I, dress, I dress to be seen and I'm generally visible. And recently I did a video and someone was saying, oh, do you know less is more? So you should start cutting down on some of the jewelry you wear. And, I'm, and I had to say to the person, this is what makes all of us individuals. Now go out there and see the plants in the garden or the flowers and whatever. Everything has its own color. Everything is unique. So you're not going to go into a marriage, for instance, and expect after you saw your wife the way she was, and you got all excited and hooked up with her and you expect her to tone down now that she's your wife and the same thing with the man as well you saw this man you know he was who he was for example um, as women we tend to do that a lot um you mean your husband you see him he loves his um he loves to smoke he loves to drink he he loves to to be seen with his friends and you get involved and then you say to yourself, you tell yourself, oh, no problem. I'm going to make him stop smoking. I'm going to make him stop drinking. And, and then you get into the marriage and you start that action. And it's not working. It's not going to work. Because you're not going to change a person who has been doing something in a certain way from the time that person was a child overnight to change all of that because he wants to please you. Now, in the end, what happens? He displeases himself. Or just the other way around for the woman, she displeases herself because she's trying to fit into this expectation of what this role is. So now it's important that you look into whatever you are in, the relationship you're in. And these are some of the things that cause so much unhappiness because you have in your head created one of the reasons they gave for marriage break 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 up is um unrealistic expectations and i agree with that completely because we have these expectations of what we expect other people to be and i you know sometimes when my daughter gets angry with her friends that have said something to her and i said you're not going to turn your friends to think the way you think you are yourself you're either fitted in, all of you are agreeing, or you're similar in behavior, or you're not. And what's not going to happen is they're going to change in order to make you happy. At every point in time, somebody is unhappy. Because the other person changes to make the other person happy, and vice versa. And what I would say is, so who's losing out at this stage? So try and understand what you're in. So once you've understood what the situation is with both of you, so this is who I am, this is who you are, you now agree to work it out. So if there's some element of something that's still between both of you, agree to work it out in the sense of, um, I know this person is like this, but I'm happy to live with it. So, I know my husband smokes, but I'm happy to live with it. I give him peace. He, love, he loves his cigarette smoking, let him smoke. I know my husband drinks, let him drink, if that's what makes him happy. I am very cautious with my money, I will be cautious with my money. So, you're picking out the things that make sense to you. I love watching a certain program, he doesn't like it. Don't get involved when I'm watching my program. You love your football, you don't want me. I, mean, I don't like football. Please feel free to watch your football. So what I'm, what I'm looking at in marriage is 
People should learn to gain freedom in marriage. I feel marriage should not be um, like a prison yet. Because sometimes I watch some movies and I see, um, I see this lack of being yourself, um, this pretentious person. And so the minute you see your wife coming, let's say you smoke and she doesn't like you smoking, you quickly snuff out the cigarette and you, you hide it away and you pretend and you, you get the perfume and you spray it all over the place and you make it look like, um, this is me, I didn't do anything. There is no need for that. Let both parties know who they are and you, you decide, do, you, do I want to keep up with this or I don't want to keep up with this? And if both of you get that freedom to be yourself, you're going to find that that sadness and that pain disappears. And so it's about knowledge is power. That's the way I like to call it. So I am aware of what he is and he is aware of who I am. Let's agree to take it on. And why this is not working is because, just like the statistics quoted, both of you get to know yourself, for instance, 12 years now realizing what kind of husband I've got mar married to. I then decide I can't take this. This is not on. Why? Because someone was lying all along. Someone, someone was invariably presenting a picture that's not real. You have instances where this man, all he wants to do is have as many relationships out there as possible and you are sitting down there quietly at home waiting for him he walks he walks i know of someone who whose husband was working only a few hours in the day and he was never home till late in the night and the issues were so where did you go after the, after work and what's going on but obviously he did not feel comfortable at home as well and so why why didn't we call him marriage why can't we find a way to just let go of each other and avoid all that pain and sadness that comes out of this? And this is why the, the, the history continues to repeat itself because people have been put in a very unhappy and unhealthy environment where everyone's upset. Husband's not happy, wife is not happy, and so it transcends down to the children. So it's about knowing what you're dealing with. It would be so fantastic if both parties can just open up to each other and say, this is who I am. And you say, this is who you are. Are we both happy to work with this? Because remember, like I said, at those early ages of marriage, no one wants to show who they are. And then 20 years down the line, 10 years down the line, 8 years down the line, you start beginning to see what reality is. And then what happens is that having problems. I mean, one of the things I, I said to myself the other day was if marriage was like going to the shop to buy something, maybe a shoe and electrical equipment or whatever, and then you take it home and, oh, it's not working, and you take it back to the shop and they return your money. So if marriage was like that for all of us, wouldn't it be fantastic? We we'll get married and, uh, and two years down the line and, okay, uh, we're not compatible, let's let's leave this stage. And then everyone will be happy. But no, what happens is it goes deeper and deeper. It destroys people emotionally, um, most times physically, and most times see, it, it goes really bad. We're going to get into that. Okay, so a bad relationship it's simply unhealthy. Um, a bad relationship um, leads to depression in most cases. Um, some people become anorexic from a bad relationship. Some people become extremely obese from a bad relationship. Um, some people become schizophrenic from a bad relationship. Um, a bad relationship could lead to death. In most cases, um, you see where, I think I didn't do the statistics, but there are instances where they, they've said most of the cases of a murder are there, especially with women, is mostly caused by broken relationships. And this is because um, 
sometimes there was a movie I watched and it was the title was Till Death Do Us Part. I can't remember this was years ago. And this this man was like, if I don't have her, nobody's gonna have her. And so it's it's one of those things that I think society pretends not to know is there. But marriage to me is one of the biggest killers of people in the sense of when it's gone wrong it really does go wrong why because so much emotion is tied up in marriage or relationships and um, and some people it is that feeling of a sore loser some people don't want to come out of it and um, you know in their head they feel they've lost but they're forgetting that this is another human being's emotion and this is another human being's emotion so if both of you have looked at yourselves and you found out that this compatibility thing is not happening um and you're opposite in extreme ways and you know it's something that all you have to do is walk away and let it ride but no people most people don't want to do that and i i talk about marriage because i know it's happened to very close family members of mine that it's led to death in most cases it has led to death um, my big sister my mom my cousins and things like that you know you end up with really really messy divorces where everything is used as a pawn like I'm gonna have the kids and you're never gonna see these kids and and uh, they poison the mind of the kids against the other partner and their other partner looks like the worst thing that happened on earth and and I just I just wish things like this never really happened I just wish we could we could both sit down and analyze the scenario and know know very clearly that we don't we don't compliment each other because the way i see a really really bad bad half is this person just doesn't connect with you and if you know this person is not connecting with you all you have to do is agree to to let go because living with a really bad half is as good as living with an enemy and I really mean every word of enemy um, I had one of my clients who were chatting and she gave me a story of how her sister got married to some man who was you know the typical one we talk about a white beater a really bad person to her and her morale was really low and she just was um, what's the word she wasn't herself anymore. You could just see something, a flicker of what she used to be. And luckily she came out of that relationship, emotionally drained she was, and um, ended up in another relationship. And what happens most times with relationships is whatever you've experienced with one, and then you end up with another, we tend to have the habit of spilling the beans, so to say. So you say everything that happened and then this one was like this and it was like that and it helped me in so many ways and all of that. And then what happens? This person then knows you, knows how weak you are, knows everything about you. And then you will think that this person has come to save you. But what happened in her case, he now turned out to be the worst nightmare. Because now he knew her, now he knew the things that hurt her. Now... And what happened? He actually then killed her. And when when they say kill, in her case, it wasn't like he took a gun and shot her or or you know stabbed her or whatever. He actually tormented her to death. He mentally abused her. And when I say mentally, mentally is such a big thing in marriage in the sense of we're talking about depression and schizophrenia and all of that. When somebody completely goes over the rail because someone has made you feel so insecure about yourself so inferior by yourself so little what happens is you lose it 
And lots of women out there are in that position and it really does hurt. It really does hurt because we don't need to get there. And this is why this video became very important for me because I know how easy it is for someone to derail to that point. Because you have emotionally invested in this other half. You have opened up in the sense of um, at a point I thought our society lied to us about marriage. That's what I thought. Because we're thinking, I don't know about you, but I got into marriage with the, with the understanding that give all, hence the one plus one equals one. So you come in, you give all. And then you have the other party, like I was asking, what is the other party bringing about? You have the other party not willing to give all, like you have given all. And then suddenly you wake up to this reality and say, what is going on here? I thought we were supposed to be given all. And this is what then pushes some women to get to that rail where they tip over. And then you start hearing about mental depression and schizophrenia and all kinds of things. So it's for you to wake up and know, like I always say with our personal development things, that you were brought on this egg for a purpose. And you need to help yourself back on track. You need to do that, help yourself back on track. And these I know are not easy things. Like I said, marriage, relationship are all personal things. So I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you're going through. But it's for you to be strong enough for yourself. Be there for yourself. Now, one other thing um, I want to really bring out is this bad half because I've chosen to call it bad half is not necessarily a bad person this bad half is a human being who has his or her own likes who is unique in his or her own way who is that person that he happens to be but where everything has gone wrong is this compatibility and complementary so Two parties who are not connecting have come together to form this one. And that's where it's going wrong. So do you find yourself in that scenario where you have ended up with somebody who's not complimentary with you? Now, if that was the case, you need to weigh it. Weigh it seriously. Um, when I say weigh, I mean look at the pros and look at the cons. And for me, most times, um, lots of people are quite happy the example of um, elizabeth taylor and she remarried seven times including marrying one person twice and still divorcing the truth is you cannot change a human being you can't change a person and so if you're going into a marriage living at the back of your mind that oh yeah i'm gonna change him i'm gonna make him be like me i'm gonna make him um, become this person that I, I have in my head. What you should understand is this is a human being. This is a human being with complete ways of thinking, complete ways of doing things, unique in his own or her own way. Do not come into marriage with that mindset that you're going to change another person. But it happens all the time. And this is where it's going wrong. I mean, I, I have an example. This has happened with um, two, of, two of my brothers. One of them was really well set up in life. I mean, we, we grew up because this is a big brother. We grew up and he was absolutely doing well. And he ended up with this young girl who was not in any way near the level he had grown himself up to in life at that time. What happened? Like I said, your partner or your half may either help you grow or help to destroy you. And his was one of those instances where she actually helped to destroy him. So instead of this person, we all knew who had gotten a certain level in life to grow higher and higher. All that happened was he now became lower and lower because he felt he had to meet up stay at her level 
so that's what it is complimenting so if you knew of if he knew that he needed someone that could compliment his kind of person he wouldn't have had to do what he did and there's so many instances of things like this that I know of. so you need to decide what is best for you this is my personality this is who I am how we complimenting each other um, if we're not what can we do about it and I, I remember I've told this story over and over about this girl who came to do our training and she had saved her money to take on a course that will help improve her life because she was fed up standing in the salon and you know doing hair and being paid something as ridiculous as three pounds and she said no instead of me doing that let me change that let me improve and and the husband got really angry and told her off to return the money he, she saved the money it wasn't his money and this is this is an example of how you're thinking your partner should help you grow but he's actually helping to pull her down so you need to really look at yourself now what I say to people, or what I practice for myself is, um, my happiness is very important, which is what I've mentioned as well. Your state of mind means a lot to you. If you find your state of mind is not healthy, you need to bring this out and sit with your partner to explain what's going on. I happen to be that kind of person. I don't keep anything inside. and. Um, I went out for a meeting this morning with some ladies and we were just chatting and one of the things that really touched my mind was listen to yourself listen to your heart listen to your body you know it's about exercising so you listen to your body and if it's about emotional and spiritual things listen to your body listen to your soul and it's about being the, the you know in in nlp uh, neuro linguistic programming or in personal development it's about being congruent with yourself you know um, the other day I wrote to someone and I was saying I said to her is your body and soul together that's what it is because we are not just this physical body there's a soul to us so your level of emotion how you're feeling at every point in time has to connect with your soul and if you find whatever you're doing with somebody is not connecting and something is something always tells you they call it intuition and you always hear that for women our intuition level is extremely high if your if your intuition says something to you then listen to it something has gone wrong somewhere and that's why something is ringing some alarm bells in your ears so in whatever relationship you find yourself now the reason the marriage or relationship or partner relationship became so important to me is because this person and you are living together so to say and you need to be reading from the same page so if something is not connecting at this point in time look at it bring it out in the open discuss it because your state of mind is extremely important and if you don't help yourself come out of that state of mind all that success you're chasing gets nowhere. All that business you want to grow gets nowhere. And so personal development for me is so huge that I think it is so important we look at ourselves first. Because once you find a happiness inside you, the rest will come. They will all connect together. Life will become one. Life will become fun. It will become exciting. You don't need to create enmity with people around you and hope to grow. It does not work. So go back into yourself. Go back into that relationship that you have and see clearly. Don't, you know, something they used to say in those days is love, love, love is blind. Push that out of your, your way of thinking because you don't want to be part of that statistics. If you find this love, is not working somewhere again you know normally um, there's another saying um, when when um, when the bills walk through the door love flies through the window 
all these things we call love turns out eventually to be can we live together can we share things together can we become one that's what it is and so you may you know i say to young people but like i have teenage daughters and you know when people get excited about this thing called relationship it's been proven that the younger you are getting into relationship the quicker it is you're going to come out and this is why looking at how much of yourself do you know is so important because if you don't even know yourself by the time you get involved with somebody else you don't know what you'll be presenting so learn to know yourself learn to know your partner be very clear read from the same page of what you are hoping and expecting for your relationship and then work with it but if you find that is not making sense you need to be very clear to yourself. It's not for me to tell you what to do. Be very clear with yourself how you want to go about this. Do you want to live with it because you looked at the pros and the cons? Or do you want to walk out of it? Because it will be you'll be better off without it. And if that's the case, what are the things that could come out of it? And you remember we said some people um love you to death so it's like you need to find out what kind of person you're dealing with because you don't want to put your life at risk or in danger so look at how you're going to deal with this scenario and what you're going to do to help yourself because all in all your life is extremely important to you there's some connection you'll the god that created you had a reason for you or has a reason and your reason for being here is not to be tied to another human being. You are complete in yourself. You are whole. And so if you enjoy each other's company, that is amazing. If it's working, that is beautiful. But if it's not, it's not for you to die in it. So find a way to walk around this. And enjoy your life. So we're going to stop it here today. Um, as always, there's so much, so much more that we could go into, but again, I don't want to keep you sitting down there the whole day, staring at it. But as always, if there's any questions you have, you want to ask me, um, feel free to email me. Feel free to write them there. Um, we plan on bringing so many more things to you from the Joy Fido International part of our business because um, there's so much out there that needs to be addressed. So this has just been one of them. If you find this has been useful to you, please share it with your friends. Because for us, I mean, for me in particular, I want to see as many people out there living a very happy, healthy life. Um, happy, healthy, successful life. Life is meant to be lived. I, I feel life is for the living so there's no point you being alive and yet dead because to me until you're dead it's not over so what's the point supposedly walking but you're so unhappy inside i mean someone asked me the other day do i really believe in hell i mean this is completely out of it but i just said this is the way i feel about it if you are in a very unhappy state of mind and you're just walking around I think that's your experience in hell here on earth because ideally you should be happy you should just feel free be yourself do the things you enjoy doing but now you're constantly harassed and barraged and stressed and all of that in this living life then you're not you're not living you're practically walking dead so let's not live walking dead let's live walking alive let's live enjoy the moment of life because it's not here forever i mean i know so many people that i love and i've lost so if life is for living let's live and be happy while we're here and then when it's over we know it's over so please learn to live your life for the live it to the fullest be happy enjoy your life so share this video with your friends um feel free to email us uh, remember to subscribe because again lots and lots more is coming your way and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching